know, it was called the American Blues Band. Right. That's ZZ Top's name before they came up with ZZ Top. Right. And you know where that came from? Where was that? The name was ZZ Top. Okay. Oh, from the papers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the joint papers. Buy them and even sell them store. Sure. In an orange package, not the about where we use them, but right. I know what they look like. It's a ZZ Top. That's where they got the name for the band. So were you, uh, what were some of the bands that you were with during that time? During that time? Uh, yeah, during the 60s. Uh, Delbert Any? McClinton uh, and the Rondell. We became known as the Rondell. R-O-N-D-E-L-L-S? Yeah. Uh. Uh, you know, that was Ronnie Kelly and Delbert McClinton. Okay. And that's where they got that name. Right. And, uh, got a good screw in there, good old-fashioned. Let's beat Charlie out of his money See? on him deals. <laughs> he never did pay me. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, do you happen to run, run across, I, did I ask you, Kirby St. Romain, did I ask you about that? No, explain to me again who that he, was. He was with the Expressions, and he had a hit in um, uh, the 60s, 64. I think he got up to number 21 with a song called uh, uh, Be My Baby or Baby Doll. It's My Baby Doll. We had one called Be My Baby. Ah. That's when I was back in uh, Buddy Dial. Buddy Dial was a wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. Right. At the same time that Don... Uh, Don Meredith. Don Meredith was trying to get a hit record. Sure. He wasn't worth a damn, but we actually had a real singer. Uh huh. Buddy Don was a good singer. And Ray Hildebrand. You remember him? No, I don't. You remember Paul and Paula? Yes. Ray uh -huh. Hildebrand was Paul. Of Paul and Paula. Uh -huh. And Jill Jackson was Paula. Uh huh. They were college mates down in. Uh, Brownville, somewhere right, around south. Right. And uh, that's how I met them. Okay. And uh, tell me a little. Tell me a little song together. Major Bill Smith. Mm -hmm. He was a crook con artist. Tell me more about the Buddy Dial one. Okay, what. Uh, uh, he was a, a football player. He, right. He had uh, been drafted by Pittsburgh. Right. And been with them for a couple of years. He got injured quite a bit. He had a bad back. Right. And uh, Dallas Cowboys, Tom Landry, picked him up and moved him down to Dallas. And he sure. became a friend of my family. Mm. And he and I were a little close partner. Is that how y'all hooked up to do a, do a song? Do what? That's how you hooked up to do some music? Well, we, I met him because mm. he was a cowboy. Right. I knew all the cowboys. Mm -hmm. Tom Landry, I knew him. They used to have me come over there and entertain the cowboys huh. uh, when they were having a uh, skull practice, whatever. Uh -huh. And I, me and Marie Hildebrand would go over there and take their guitars and entertain them. That was when they were over on Central? Yeah, at the old North Central. Right, right. Practice field up there. Right, I remember before they moved over to Forest Lane. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was the old place. Yeah, that was uh, that was the old Kansas City one, and then uh, then the Cowboys got it out from underneath them. <laughs> well, they also got the farm. They got everything away from Kansas City. But you know, we that's there. a whole other story. <laughs> well, it's easily simplified. Yeah. There was the Dallas owners of the Cowboys, and uh -huh. there was the Kansas City owners, and you know who that was? Lamar Hunt. Yep. That was the Hunt Boys. Uh huh. And I remember the first year that uh, that uh, Lamar Hunt was in the business up there in Kansas City. They were interviewing Old Man Hunt, H. L. Hunt. I met that, that old man. He was in his nineties when I met him. I met him at the Texas State Fair. And. Uh, I saw him, I don't know why he was there, I don't know. He was in his 90s, middle 90s. Yeah. And very outgoing, man. I asked a young girl who was waiting the counter, I said, who's that old man over there? She said, does he look familiar? I said, well, yeah, I know. She said, that's Mr. H.L. Hunt. I said, oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Some of the others, I was 
the sister. That's one that tried to corner the silver market and got busted by the feds. I remember that. Yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah. And several of the Huns went to jail over that. <laughs> so you and uh, uh, Mr. Hildebrand would go over there and entertain the cowboys. Yeah. What, y'all just came out and just showed up at the practice field? or? Yeah, we came up. They call us. Uh, usually it was either Bob Lilly would call us. Oh, you're kidding. He was a friend of ours. Wow. I know his son, yeah. Yeah, Bob Lully Jr. But. I didn't know there was a junior. I knew him when he had his first wife, Kitsy, and he had two daughters. And they, uh, I don't know, they were just young girls when I knew them. They, they hadn't hit their you know, beautiful stride yet. I haven't seen them since. I've known sure. Them. They might have become beautiful young ladies, I don't know, but back then they favored their father quite a bit. Sure, sure. Huh. Looks like they could have been at least linebackers, I'm not sure. <laughs> you didn't happen to know uh, Tom Frankhauser, did you? No, don't know okay. that. Um, Where's, do you remember some of the other cowboys that you knew from back then? Yeah. Uh, L.G. Dupree, by chance? What? L.G. Dupree, long gone? No. Okay. Uh, I, I happen to know him, at, but that's okay. No, Go ahead. I knew Bob right. Hayes quite well. Okay. You know who that was? Oh, yeah. World's fastest human you being. You bet. You bet. He changed the NFL, totally. Yeah. Did you know that this is a fact? There was a story circulating around that there was a secret play that was in the Cowboys playbook. And it was denied for years. They said, no, that didn't exist. <laughs> the name of the play was Bobby Go Deep. <laughs> there was such a play. I got privy to look at the playbook. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, I mean, you know, Landry didn't care. I could read because I wasn't in the football business. I wasn't even a bookie or nothing, you know. <laughs> so they weren't scared of me. Yeah. I was just an innocent kid running Sure. Around. And, uh. But there was actually a play in that book called Bobby Go Deep. Amazing. And Don Meredith explained that play to me. He said, well, hell, we had the world's fastest human being on our team. And he said, all I had to do was the easy job. If I could get the damn ball to Bob Hayes, that's seven points. <laughs> that is amazing. That's an automatic seven points. You bet. You bet. Well, who in the hell is going to catch him? You bet. You bet. He's the fastest man out there on any play playing field at <laughs> any time. You can't catch him. <laughs> so how long did you uh, play for the Cowboys? Do you remember about how many years, y'all? Oh, eight or ten years. years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So do you probably played up there at Forest Lane then? Probably, I, uh, I think so, because they moved up there in 67, I think. And I think I they started... I might have been going to California for then. I oh, don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, uh... Yeah, the, uh... That uh, the old place was down there, I believe, at the Cowboy Towers, or really, really close to that, right there at Yale and Central, somewhere right around there. I don't remember when there was a Holiday Inn there, mm -hmm. uh, off of Greenville. Mm -hmm. It was uh, where we were was on the North Central Expressway, right. but Greenville Avenue was paralleling that. Sure. All through that whole part of the country there. Yeah. And uh, there was a Holiday Inn where they always put the Cowboys up. Okay. And Landry's rules were they put the Cowboys, everybody's on the team, uh -huh. they leave their home, they leave their wives, they leave their children, they can't go to parties, they can't go anywhere, they can't get any alcohol, they can't do anything, but be holed up in a Holiday Inn <laughs> for three days before the ball game. Yeah. What they did out of town, don't know, I didn't go with them. <laughs> But they were very well watched over. Huh. I mean, like a prisoner's in a top rank prison. I remember. I remember. I uh, I worked in the same building when they were there in the seventies, and uh, Landry had a lot of rules for him. Still, even then. Um, tell me, uh, you know, you left for California what in the late sixties, early sixties, in the early sixties. 
And you came back? Uh, 64, I came back about 66 or 7. Okay, all right. How long did you stay in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area? Well, I was, here. I was born here in 43. Right. This was always my headquarters. Right. I came and went, you know. Sure. I went on tour down to Florida. And right after the Florida tour, we came back to Dallas. And that's where we hooked up with the Beach Boys. Well, who were you on tour with in Florida? Uh, Rondell. Oh, the Rondells, okay. Mm -hmm. Great. And then when we came back, the Rondells were uh, opening act for uh, Beach Boys. Wow. Where was this at? Do you remember? Yeah. Uh, was that the Cotton Bowl? No. Huh? Um, we opened for them in Dallas and uh, Austin. Okay. Austin Memorial Auditorium, something Okay. Like that. All right. And uh, somewhere else. Oklahoma City. Okay. Yeah, we opened for them. We came from Florida and went straight to Oklahoma City. Sure. And met up with the Beach Boys. Uh-huh. Met a couple of performers there, too. Sure. That were performing just like us, opening acts. Right. And uh, a couple of them became real famous. Damn funny members. Hopefully he's going to do it. Some guys that were really good. Oh, I tell you, this is a little, little bit of an exciting thing. Uh -huh. I accidentally met more 